This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Hi, book friends. I'm your host, Danny, and I'm the first time reader going through this series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we're covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co host, Brett. He's a longtime fan who's acting as my tour guide on this journey. We'd like to acknowledge and thank our executive producers, Brandy and Aaron Kirkwood, Andre the Man in White, and Chad Welsh. And before we get into this episode today, we have a new patron to welcome to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. So thank you and welcome to Stephen Wilkerson. We really appreciate your support and we want to thank you for your generosity. In this episode, we're talking about the prologue of book five, The Fires of Heaven. Yeah, so the prologue is called The First Sparks Fall. Yeah, let me tell you, I almost just really messed up that title. Yes, that's true. I actually did mess it up, and we did. did a retake. Snip, snap. <laughs> <laughs> it's all cut out. No one's going to hear the it. The Fires of Heaven. The Fires of Heaven, yeah. Now, book let five. me ask you, in a series where there is a, like a creator and a dark one, sure. is there a heaven and a hell? Because well, we have a shell ghoul. Okay, so but, shell ghoul isn't hell. It's a literal mountain from what we know. Right. Right. So, and again, we have people in this series who are very aware of things like the pattern and Teleron Riyadh and how the universe works. Yeah. In a large sense. The whole, like, souls being reborn Exactly. Stuff. And we have no references ever of heaven or hell in the, in the sense. We have a colloquial term of heaven, right? Yeah. But not like a, it's a literal place. I just place. don't know if anyone has ever said it at all, if we've heard it at all. So I just always found this title in particular... Very intriguing. So, and I thought maybe you might have something for me. Well, but like, I do. Well, colloquial term of the heavens being like the skies above, mm. right? And we have that first passage that kind of references that too. Mm. So my big Which question, we'll talk about. yeah, my big question was going to be for the fires of heaven. Did you have like this, you know, aha moment, just kind of like you did in um, the oh, shadow the rising? Shadow like, oh, the is shadow is rising. rising. Yeah. Did you have the same for this? No. Or like, oh, fires of heaven. Nope. Nothing. Okay. No, I didn't for okay, this one. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there together. So why don't we start with a fun fact and then we'll jump into like, you know, recapping of stuff we've learned and then move it on into the prologue. Yeah, I'm cool with that. I just want to especially say hi to anyone who's listening to us for the first time. I've recently been made aware that some people just jump into our podcast at the beginning of a book. What? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. And so I wanted to you know say what? hi and welcome, and we're happy to have you here. Yeah. It's been a learning pro progression from the very beginning of book one till now, so... I can't believe it. Yeah. And we are almost exactly at our two-year pod anniversary. That's exciting. Almost. It's coming up. We'll celebrate when okay. it's our pod you'll anniversary have, date. You'll have to remember that, because I definitely I won't. I always remember our pod anniversary. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess if anyone's listening to this for the first time, that's crazy to me, but that's Okay. I always like to start us off with a fun fact. In every episode, I'm going to tell you something really neat or interesting that I find cool and fun. So fun is very like, it's a loose definition of it. We have fun here. We have fun here. Okay. So <laughs> the book stats for the general character perspectives, I always like to start us off at the beginning of a book and kind of tell you what you're in for. And it's not going to be different for the fires of heaven. So here we go. So we know that this is the fourth longest book in the series. And we just had... The second longest, and then after this one, we got the longest, and then the third longest is way down the line. So this is the longest one besides the next one, and then they all get a little bit shorter. But this is the first book so far that is majority female perspectives. Ooh. Yes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So far, it's all ooh, been like majority ooh. male, and oh, now it flips shoot. majority female, and it doesn't really change going forward. Hey, Brett. So now on, mostly female. Hey, Brett. Yeah. The future is female. The future is female. Absolutely. I agree with that. So by word count, we have a bit over 200,000 words from a female perspective and about 145,000 from male perspective. Okay. So the trend, if you remember, right from book one to book five oh, of the yeah, female. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. So it went 50,000 to 75,000 to 80,000 to 150,000 to 200,000. And that's where we are now on this book. Well. And then for male, it went 290,000 in the book one because it was like basically all Rand. Dropped down to 175, then 150, back up to 240,000, and then down to 145,000 for this book. Mm. Yeah. I want to pretend like I didn't completely tune out. It's a flowchart. 
Yeah, it's great. I believe you. Yeah. Cool. The biggest thing that was my takeaway from these books is I really truly thought this one was the longest one just because the old paperback copy sitting on the shelf is significantly thicker. Oh, it's, yeah. It's got some girth. And there was a it's bit a, of a controversy because yeah. last book I was like, The Fires of Heaven isn't the longest book. Yeah, but it looks like that. Yeah. So this is the one for our folks on the video. Yes. So The Fires of Heaven with the um, sweet covers... The book itself is huge comparatively, and I opened it up to read it, and it's because the font is ginormous. Yeah, the font's bigger and the pages are thicker. Comparatively, it's a hundred pages more than the brand new book that I just ordered that came in, and it's wild. For but video, folks, I'm holding it up, and yeah. you can see the the girth of this guy. <laughs> it's it's, it's got big. Girth. It's big. <laughs> it's, so yeah, and that's why there was a lot of controversy because when you look at it, it looks like Fires of Heaven is the biggest, but it's actually the fourth biggest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So hey, it's actually not that bad. I feel like there's a joke somewhere here it about was the how girth. to make yourself look bigger. Oh, <laughs> there's got to be a joke in <laughs> thought, here somewhere. Thought that was the joke. <laughs> yeah, the, the girth is the joke, but okay. like there's another one in there somewhere. Okay. okay. We're gonna glaze over it. <laughs> so. Just for funsies, sure. I'm reading the old version. You're reading the new version. Yes. We're going to see if things line up, if yeah, there are yeah. things different. I love these older versions because like letters and words just like are jumping around on the pages and yeah, something still happened understand. in all the printing that was yeah. just like. People I, have tried to explain the whole like how books wait. are printed. I can't wait. Doesn't I can't work. wait to find out. <laughs> okay. That was a good fact. Thanks, yeah, Brett. You're welcome. So yeah, to kick us off, I think we also, we don't have any references right now, but we just want to take a shot to cheers in us getting through the fires of heaven yeah okay or i guess jumping into it so jump into it jump into it yeah season five is a big fd it is it's a bfd i feel that way and after this book then we're a third of the way done the series whoa that's yeah. pretty cool it is pretty big yeah and while i was reading it i remember thinking about harry potter for a Harry Potter shot, and then while I was doing my notes, I it, I lost it. It's gone. So okay. maybe while we're talking, it'll come to me, and if not, this will do. Okay. Cheers. Cheers to season five. <coughs> I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Oh. I'm so bad at liquor. That's okay. One day. Probably, probably not. not. Yeah. If you were going to get better, it probably would have happened by now. Right? Yeah. <coughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Okay, are we ready to jump into this? Yeah, well, first I want to talk about how book four wrapped up. Okay, let's do a recap. Before we yeah. get into the prologue, I want to talk a little bit about a recap. Where did we just leave off? Yep. What just happened? A lot of crazy shit. It's kind of funny, but the Shadow Rising, so much stuff happens that you probably already forgot happened. Yeah. Like, we got introduced to and saw the murder of Sara. Oh, Sarah. Yeah. We got to see Rand battle himself in the mirror with the whole, like, oh, reflections. Shit. Playing cards came to life. Axes came to life. We got to see him try to revive a dead child and then fail. Okay, those are all, like, such little things you're talking about. Let's do overarching. Those are huge events. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I can't believe <laughs> Let's do some, like, overarching. Okay, okay. So we have Nynaeve and Elaine. Yeah. Kicking butt in Tanchico. That's true. Kicking some Mogedian butt. Yeah, yeah. They worked it out. It was a it was a iffy start, but yeah. they they ended strong. Well, and you know because they accepted help with their planning, yes, things went a little better for them. Yeah. They're leveling up a little bit, and I love it. I'm here for it. I'm here for them being competent, and I'm hoping that continues. Yes. Okay. We'll Crossing see. the fingers because we got left on a big cliffhanger of they just you know basically. Well, eh. they were gonna go to the tower. Yeah. That's like was their plan. That so, was the plan. So here's where I'm going to throw some predictions out for the beginning of this book. Okay. I think that this is probably where Nynaeve and Elaine are going to get to the tower and then find out that shit's gone down in the tower. Okay. But as I'm saying that, I'm thinking about the last time they went from Falma to the tower and it took like six freaking months. Okay. It took so long for them to get there. Do you think we're going to see that kind of time span again? I hope not. But like, how are they going to get there faster? Okay. 
It took men so long to get to the, like where they are in the world. Like they aren't just going to like hop on a portal stone. And well, here, here's the thing though. They want to go to the tower. Yeah. But who's to say they get to the tower. Yeah, I know. In the eye of the world, they wanted to go to Tar Valen. They never even showed up there. I know. So like, Hey, who's no, to I say? No, 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 I know. But like, we know at the end of fall, the, at the end of the fallen battle and the great hunt, they were going to go. And then like halfway book, halfway through book three, they finally got there. And so much had happened. It took them so long to get there. We missed their entire journey. Yeah, yeah. It was very uneventful, (laughs) turns out. So I'm just hoping that that doesn't happen again. I want to see the journey. I'm wondering if they're going to, like, go through Saldea somehow. Like, I'm still so bad at the geography. No, no way that's going to happen. Because I think that Perrin and Fael are headed to Saldea. Okay, well, Saldea is, like, top left of the map. Okay. As you can see, Saldea is right here. Oh, we have a map right here. And they're way down here. Oh, there's no way. And they're supposed to go to Tar Valen, which is like across the world. But oh, okay. it's good to have a map behind us. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm sticking with they're going to get to the tower. Okay. Because you know what? We enter in the prologue and it's two months later. That's true. We so, get a time lapse. Like maybe it won't be that long. Okay. We'll pick up on two months into the journey. And they're not traveling with like Varen. Maybe Varen sold them down because he's old. <laughs> Okay, that's good too. Okay. Who's next? <laughs> yeah, uh, Perrin and Fael. Okay, they're going to Saldea, Just you said? Just got married. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they're going to go to Saldea. Okay. And Why? Because they got to meet her family. Right, 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 right. You said that. You said that. Yeah. Okay. Now, I predicted at the end of The Shadow Rising yeah. that the next time we see her, she's going to be pregnant. What? But here's the thing. I completely forgot about the other bird over on his other shoulder. Right. Okay. The hawk. The hawk. Who's going to be Barrelane. Yeah, Barrelane, and she's yeah. gonna disrupt some shit. And okay. so I like forgot that that was even a thing that was gonna come in and happen. So like I just want to throw that out right now that I don't think it's gonna maybe be this book, but I think she's coming back at some point. Okay, so you don't think that plot line was resolved? Because like when oh, we got no. when we got introduced to the like the haw- hawk no and the falcon, way. it was like this is going to be a thing, and it was Brett. a thing for a while. No, I don't know what you think. You okay. know that's not resolved, <laughs> and you know I know that's not even a little. That was just the tip. Tip of the iceberg. Tip okay. of the iceberg. For okay. You. Okay. Yeah, but they're gonna go to Saldea, and there's like stuff happening there, which Definitely. we're actually gonna talk about. Yeah. In the prologue. Yeah. And then we have the events transpiring in the waste. And then we have all the stuff going on in the waste. Yeah, a whole lot of stuff. We've got Rand as the Karakarn, mm-hmm. and then we've got Kuladin as the, you know, alternative Karakarn. No, he's not. Well, he he's was not, like not. struck down. <laughs> he wasn't struck down at all. He's gone with the Shido. Oh. What do you mean he was struck down? I thought they all like were like, no, cool it in, you're so a moron. The Get people out of who here. are left with Rand are all for Rand, but yeah. all the Shido left and, and a, a bunch of other Aiel left, not necessarily like to run away. To run away and like drop their spears, but then all the Shido went with Kuladin as like an alternate Karakarn, because he hasn't dropped that yet from what we've seen. Well, he's gonna have to get murdered. I am for that. I am totally on board with murder. I think that Rand should have murdered him like straight up when he was like, I'm the Kara Karn. Right there. That's the time to murder him. In, I feel in like my the professional Aiel opinion. Maybe would have respected that. Yeah. Like they get it. Yeah. It's like stab, stab, or whatever. Well, you because, know, fireball him. Well, because Kooladin tried to. Yeah. He tried to kill Rand. Like, why can't Rand try to kill Kooladin? I'm like, it's all who fair. knows how many Aiel drowned in the rain yeah. <laughs> staring up at it? We never talked about that either. No, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't see any bodies like that either. So. I bet some did. You know what's also more, well, I don't want to say more important, but equally important is Rand has a new teacher. Rand does have a new teacher. Yep. And I have to say, at the end of the last episode, we had been talking for so long. It was a long one. It yeah. was a long yeah. one. We were talking about lots of stuff. And I sort of have had some time now to decompress sure. from the end of the book. And I'm still so happy with my prediction that i wanted a forsaken to teach ran yeah i mean that's what they were pointing at for the entire i feel like, like right from the beginning and some people like in our discord and some people reaching out to us like i feel like you've all colluded oh 100 to... there's been collusion yeah <laughs> to like throw me <laughs> off like i get messages like 
oh, how could you ever think that? And stuff like that. <laughs> and I'm like, you guys, it might happen. I don't I'm know. 100% here for the collusion. It's great. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, oh, what if he pretends to go to the dark side and then gets taught and then turns on them that was my whole thought there's also a lot of frustration when you like as soon as we're introduced to keely you're like that's Lanfear," and everyone's like ah how did she under how did she figure that out oh well, you know luckily easy. you flip-flopped a lot afterwards well, but yeah i did flip-flop it was good but there was a lot of good stuff but rand having a teacher who is a forsaken who is asmodian right who's not a cool. glee man which we also need to give me some credit for because like no matter who we, i didn't predict he was asmodian no you didn't but, but i said that's no glee man you did but There's he's no also way. he gets partial marks for being a gleeman because he's, he still performs. He did. He does perform and he does do things. Like he well, has some artistic ability. He clearly like can play some instruments. So. Yeah, like he he has some skill, so I can't take that completely away from him. No, but like <laughs> Rand's like this guy's not like Tom. Also, Rand was wrong. He thought it was Kadir because of the eyes. Because the but eyes. turns out that. Dark friend just has beady eyes. Kadir's just like a regular dark friend who's kind of like a weirdo. Who's a weirdo <laughs> with beady eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So we have that going on and then we have the whole like Logan train the new Logan train yeah they were leaving yeah maybe to go round up some blues they, they were like around in Tarvalon I didn't see them leave they were on their way out the four of them that was what they were doing they I were thought they leaving. were finding more blues to leave with there are no more blues all the blues in the tower either got murdered or they left yeah they left but I don't know if they left Tarvalon yeah they're gone well I didn't know that that's what they said in... No, because... Okay. Okay, okay. Min was okay, like, okay, okay. there's no yeah, more... Yeah. The only blues who are left are dead. Everybody else is literally gone from Tarvelin. Oh, gone. Ran and away. then the whole, like, note that they have... Yeah, yeah. The whole thing about it being, like, it's not just the bearer, it's whoever has We can this. get all of us out. So and they were... that was including Logan. Yes. Okay. That was why Swan was Because I thought they like... were going to go find some other blues... No, they're all and gone. ...and get out together. All gone. But there is like a network of blues, which we learn about, which I think is going to be helpful for them. Network of eyes and ears for the blue. And blues. Yeah. For, yeah. 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 blue eyes and eye. Okay. We'll clarify when we get there. E yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> okay. So moving into book five. I think we're going to hear more about what's going on in Kyrian. With like okay, Bran yeah. sending a, yep, yep, yep. an army in there. Okay. What do you think the, the premise for book five is? Like, what's the purpose? Know, what are we doing? What's, know, the big, what's the big thing? I don't think thing? there is a big thing. Okay. The same yeah. with the Shadow Rising, like I was hoping for, branched out. Yeah. Right? So we sort of have some, we, we started off the first three books. You, yeah. You feel an analogy coming on. Sure. So the first three books are like the trunk of the tree. Okay. Where everyone just sort of sticks together and each book has an overarching theme and that's it. Okay. And then book four starts to sp like split and sort of branch off. I see where you're going we, with that. And we meet some new characters and some other characters sort of start getting some starring perspectives. Yeah. And then now we're getting into, and then as the series progresses, I bet we turn into like a full tree. And it's like, oh my God, there's so many things going on. There's going to be so many things going on. So many characters, so many plot points, but I'm here for it. That's, that's what actually I not want. A, that's not a bad analogy. You know, what's really funny is it was either at the end of the Dragon Reborn or the very, very, very beginning of the Shadow Rising. You had made a prediction that the Shadow Rising, you had said... I'm pretty sure Rand's going to go and get those Aiel guys on his side. Yeah. 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 And it's like that was kind of, in a large way, the overarching, you know, thing for Rand. For not, Rand. Not for the whole book. But... And that's the point is like it can't yeah. just be like one big. It's got to be a bunch of different multiple touch points. So I'd say for Rand, this book is going to be about him learning. Okay. Learning get, how to channel. Learning how to channel. That makes sense. I don't know how like long we have until because we already see some craziness yeah yeah coming through are we are we sticking in the aiel waste or are we going to be coming over the dragon wall i think we're in the waste for a bit okay because he still has stuff to do here he does like he can't just be like i'm your guys's new leader Let's i'm your go. new yeah. chief of chiefs or whatever the hell it is yeah. and then just like take off okay like i don't think so i think that Egwene is going to sort of finish up her training, her okay. Dreamwalker training or whatever. And then I think Moraine is getting out of here. Okay. Are we going to resolve the whole Kool-Aidin, you know, storyline this book of the, you know, alternate Kara Karn situation? Yes. I'm going to say hard yet. Yeah. I'm going to just take a hard stance. Sure. I want 
that wrapped up. Let's wrap that up. Let's let's figure yeah, it out I so we can all be on board. I think this whole Aiel thing, yeah, yeah, kind of needs to be wrapped up. Side note, sure. I'm feeling really bad for Bane, Chiad, and Gaul. Okay, why? Because they're like on the other side of the flipping world. Sure. Helping out their buddies. Yeah. And they have no idea what's happening. Oh yeah, no clue. That's and, true. Yeah, and they're okay. the only Aiel like. In the ideal world, <laughs> who have no idea that the car car has been found, and I mean, for now, and their entire there's a breaking in the threefold land, and they're just like over here. They don't even know. They don't even know. Okay, well, it's probably better they don't know right now, right? No, so, they need no? to know. Okay, <sighs> I mean, keep people in the dark. It's always better to not know things, right? No. Right. See, you're more Varen than you think because she's like. Varen is always saying it's better to know things. I'd always prefer to know things than to not know things. And if I have the choice, I think this I is the ultimate things. throw off. I think Varen is for sure a dark friend. Yeah, Black you've acid. said that a bunch of times I, though. So doesn't even it's make like, any and you sense. have no evidence. None. <laughs> Literally none. That's the one I'm sticking to. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <That's> like... <laughs> yeah. okay. Okay. And before we really move on into the prologue, I got to talk a little bit about my boy Matt. Yes. Okay. Because I have to tell you, so the Dragon Reborn was Matt's time to shine. That was Matt's starring role, his breakout role. Okay, okay. You know, yeah. getting healed, getting his luck power. Being a cool guy. Being a cool guy. Yeah. You know, rescuing the women. Although there's lots of argument about where the apology <laughs> should have been. We can overlook that. Shadow Rising, Matt goes through the doorways gets new abilities and new answers. Yeah. And then for like the last half of the book becomes a very, very, very side character. Well here's the thing for Matt too. He he He's went the to tag along. He went to Ruidian because he was told to that go to Ruidian. He had to go there or he was gonna die. So he mm -hmm. went and did it, but now he doesn't have like what's the next step? He doesn't have like the next thing I have to do to not die. It was like that was the thing. He did it and now it's like what where do we go from here? Mm -hmm. He's gotta marry someone Who's probably Shan Chen. Right. Daughter of the Nine Moons. Which seems nuts to me. And I don't get it at all. Yeah. Well, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't mean he's a willing participant, right? So. Uh, yeah, but like, how's he even going to? Anyway. Okay. <laughs> uh, That's a question for another book, probably. I hope so. that Matt has more. I, like, I honestly can't predict where he's going from here. Okay. I have predicted that he's going to become some sort of like lord or like army general or like lead an army somehow. Yeah, because he's got the whole like. I don't want to be an army general. And yeah. then he's got an army general in his head. <laughs> right. All that. And the memory. Thing. Yeah. So like maybe, so. maybe he does break away from Rand a little bit here. Okay. And goes, cause I predicted that he was going to not even go with them. Yeah. You I did. thought he yeah. was going to put off going through Winian for a long time. That was something I was very wrong about. Yeah. I thought yeah. he was going to put it off and separate and go do his own thing. And then the last thing I want to talk about is more gays in Camelin. Right. Okay. Because I think Elaine needs to find out what's going on there. And I think, because we found out it's Ravine, yep. who's Gabriel, who's like in control of that situation. 100%, yeah. And I think that needs to get wrapped up ASAP. Okay, so maybe it's like a naive Elaine on their way to Tarvale and come across, you know, pay a little visit to old Mama Bear. Camelin. And Camelin on the way to Tarvalin. It works on the map. Because you cut across the roads, right? You go along the yeah, road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see it. I see it. And then up to Tar Valen. Okay. So, That's what I want. Technically, it works. I don't know if it'll happen, but I want it. Okay, that would be great. I, I just feel for Morgaze. Like, she is such a strong ruler, independent lady. Yep. And I hate that she's being controlled by a Forsaken. Yeah, it now. sucks. It's not I a good situation. It. I hate so. it. And she needs help. Yes. She needs help. Okay. All right. Okay. Are we going to do this? The prologue. The first sparks fall. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, and we get a little passage there too. So Yeah, well, we also have the chapter symbol of the wheel and snake. Yes, we do. And do you want to read the passage? It's like a little scripture from the prophecies of the dragon. Yeah, sure. With his coming are the dread fires born again. The hills burn and the land turns sear. The tides of men run out and the hours dwindle. The wall is pierced and the veil of parting raised. Storms rumble beyond the horizon, and the fires of heaven purge the earth. There is no salvation without destruction, no hope this side of death. Yikes. Yeah, it's pretty bad. That's a that's a 
downer. It sounds not so good. It's not like, oh, the dragon's going to save us all. No, it's not one of those ones. No, it's like, it, it's going to be bad before it gets worse. It's going to get worse before it gets worse. And this is circa 400 AB, which is after breaking. So 400 years after breaking. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and that's when like about. shit was still sort of. Oh yeah. Stuff was still in turmoil for, yeah. It's basically never was See, not. I didn't pay attention to like anything <laughs> in there because I just expect you to tell me what to take out of that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's some things to talk about when you're like the dread fires are born again. Will you again. tell me, do these ever make sense? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. You can oh, okay. totally, you can totally take stuff out of all these. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. All right. So we're going to enter the prologue on drumroll. Yeah. Elida's perspective. I bet you didn't expect Elida. I did not expect well, it. I mean, like, I was happy for it. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm, mostly happy to get back to the tower to see what's going on. Yes. And let yeah. me tell you, somebody asked me what my feelings were right now about Galad, Gawain, Elida, all that. Sure. And I had to say, the whole Gawain thing, I'm still pissed off because he didn't stick to, like, he straight up murdered people yeah. on the grounds that he just, like, hated Swan, whatever. And then, like, the second he sees her, he lets her free. Yep. Which, like, I'm happy for, but that makes me just hate Galad, no, Gawain so much. Yeah. Like, stick to your shit. You're, so, not, you're not the only one who feels that way. Yeah, but. so, Elida, <laughs> this is such a hot take, and people don't love it, but let me tell you, I don't. Not like her. Okay, I mean that's fair. We we kind of see even more in her perspective. I, like she's not a she's not a dark friend. She's not Black Aja. She's a hundred percent not a dark friend. She's a little misguided, maybe on some things, and we can talk about it. Potentially, if you want, so. she's like a little hard headed. Yeah, she has a very skewed version of herself, a skewed vision of herself. Like she even thinks of herself at the beginning of this that people think she's beautiful at first sight, and I've never one time ever heard anyone yeah. be like. Oh, yeah, she's beautiful. Well, no. in Rand's perspective, it handsome. was like handsome. Yeah, I yeah. think it was Rand's and perspective. And Fane later says toothsome. Yeah. I don't even know what that freaking means. <laughs> A lot of teeth, I think. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so. Yeah, I just, I like her tenacity. It's hard to take I like, like a... <laughs> how, no, I'm just telling you all the things that people are going to hate me saying. Yeah. I don't hate Elida. I actually kind I'm of here. like her. I'm here for that right are now. Are you? That's because great. yeah. Oh man, she sticks to her plan. She 100% believes in something and goes for it. Yeah, yeah. Go lady. I mean, like, I don't <laughs> love it, but I also really never really like Swan. I think we're supposed to like Swan because she's connected to Moraine and we love Moraine. But like, Swan, ugh. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. Piss people off right yeah. at the beginning. Let's just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just calling it like it is. I'm eager to see Swan get herself out of this like s sticky situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That and then maybe she'll grow for okay, me. Okay, okay. But I like always considered person, so. her like someone who's very like inflexible and. Oh, she's very rigid, and Swan even like knows that she is rigid in her thoughts and opinions. Yeah. We've seen that. We've seen Moraine think about Swan as like very like you know this is what she's going after and this is it and nothing else and exactly. I'm not going to shift yeah. her. Although Elida also is very rigid. Let's be real. Yeah. But, I mean, I get where she's coming from. I understand why she's the way that she is and what she truly believes and thinks. Her actions, like, make sense. Yes, it does. Except that, you know, we've heard her interpretations of prophecies that she's heard. And maybe that's causing some issues, too. Yeah. Okay. So. Let's get into it, though. Because she's the Amarlin now. And she's sitting in her... Amberlin chamber. There are other Aes Sedai there discussing world events. She's barely listening. They're all trying to figure out what's going on around the world right now and deciding the tower's best course of action. Yeah, and this is a fun little tidbit for us as the reader to get like recapped oh, on stuff that happens. Oh, 100%. This is what that that's what this is. Yeah. And yeah. just to kind of like keep a mental note of, we get the fact that there is like a two month time jump here and just understand how far behind the tower is in world events and what's happening. So like keep that all in mind. The stuff they're discussing now, it's two months after, if not more, of these events. It's two months. Yeah. It's, it's oh, been two months since Elida has taken power. Right. And we're not quite sure exactly. We're hoping that it was like in the timeline of like when we saw it. Yeah. 
like at the same time all the other stuff was happening, but like there's no yeah. way to know for sure. Yeah. So except for the messages that we got were like aligned with Moraine. Yeah. Like that's the only thing we had. Yeah. Okay. So we get some topics of the conversation and we have Danelle. <laughs> who is bringing Danelle? Who's a brown? Yeah. Who is not a black Aja in Tenchiko? Right. <laughs> with Leandrin, she is a brown Aja in the tower with Elida. That was a big mix up. That was so. a mix up. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. Uh, yeah. Okay. So she's talking about something happening in Shinar because yeah. there's rumors of skirmishes, but not with Trollocs with each other. Yeah, and that kind of makes sense because the Borderlanders have other stuff to worry about, like the Trollocs. So they're not going to fight between themselves. Yeah, not like Ilian now, and Tyr and stuff. There don't seem to be a lot of Trollocs in the Blight right now. Well, that's because they're, they're, they're all, all the two, the two rivers. rivers. <laughs> And then they shut the way gate, so they're like, can't yeah, get back. Yeah, they trapped in the ways, yeah. and then they got to go back to this. Like, maybe, but... <laughs> no, they're all stuck in the two rivers, or they're all dead. Yeah. Right? Okay, but also, there's only like a couple thousand, ultimately, in the two rivers, and there's probably more... What are they doing? That's the question. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. They're not in the blight. <laughs> they're not in the blight. Okay. Uh-oh. They're not coming out of the blight. Ah, uh, Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So the majority of the Aes Sedai that are here are red. Yes. So we get that. Yep. And no blues, obviously. No. And we have someone named Tesla. No, just kidding. Teslin. Nice. Teslin. And yep. she's going to speak about Saldea. Yes, this is important. And the Marshal General has an army on the move. Yep. And we know who the Marshal General of Saldea is. We do. Fael's daddy. Yeah. So that's why I was curious why you're saying that Perrin and Fael are going to be going to Saldea. Yeah. Because I think that... Fael's daddy's bringing the army south <laughs> and east, was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, south and east. So it's like, sounds about right. He's moving on down. Yeah. So I'm thinking because we get this tidbit here, like this is a very interesting yeah. literary like writing technique because now we're getting to know what's going on in certain places after we already have been introduced to the characters. Yeah, Because yeah, if last book, Swan had gotten some news about the Marshal General of Saldea and Queen Tenobia doing some shit, it would have meant nothing. To you. To me. Exactly. To, yeah, That's what yeah, I mean. Yeah. Like, it would have meant nothing. And so hearing it now, it's like, ooh, my ears perked up. And I That's went, ooh, dad. ooh, Fio's dad and So why is cousin. it coming? Yeah. Yeah. But I think we're hearing about this now like stuff happening or in and around Saldea. Sure. Because we're going to like go there. Gotcha. That makes sense. Okay. That's why. That's okay. Okay. my thing there. Okay. But I also would have predicted that before I read the prologue. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. Yeah. You've talked about that a bit. So. Yeah. But so this army is not going towards the blight like normal. They're going south and east. Alviarin, who's like the super cool white suspects word of Taim escaping question when you say out. the super cool white do you mean she's like cool oh, and collected rad. or <laughs> like she's <laughs> oh yeah she's groovy no uh cool calm collected okay okay well, what, i just have to clarify no i'm yeah. just using robert jordan's terminology yeah like she's ice cold in her emotions okay I just had to clarify. I just uh, gotta make sure. Super cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Super cool. <laughs> okay, but yeah, she's talking about how they're suspecting word of Taim escaping, like seeping out and people hearing about it. Yes. So Does that make sense in this scenario? Yeah, it does. So there's a couple of things that are going on here. So the word that Taim has escaped is starting to get out to like the regular people. Got it. Okay. So Alviarin is gonna redouble efforts to recapture him. But also we find out that the Aes Sedai have been doing their best to hide the fact that Taim even escaped in the first place. And that's caused a rift with Tenobia and Bashir, like the queen and Fael's dad. So that's causing a rift with Saldea mm-hmm. because now they don't trust the Aes Sedai to deal with Taim properly again. Okay, so Alviarin says, well, we're going to redouble efforts to capture Taim and... Then we get something about how Queen Tenobia needs Aes Sedai guidance and help. Yeah, because she's like the willful child in their eyes. We've heard Fael talk about like she's going to go and brag to Tenobia, the fact that she led an army, basically. Yeah, that's why I think she's going yeah. back there. So, yeah. I don't know. Okay. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. I want there to be this, like, I don't know, clash of no, that's, stuff. 
that's... It'll be a reunion, not necessarily... It doesn't have to be a clash. I like... No, because there's going to be like a Red Aja or someone there who's okay, like yeah. <laughs> helping or guiding. Yeah, they're trying, to, they're trying to send someone that way. Yeah. Okay. So Elida is starting to just like hate Alviarin's emotionless, cold nature. And then she also hates like the green Aja for wearing too tight and low cut dresses. So after a ton of conversation about like Shinier... Shinar? Shinar, yeah. Shinar. <laughs> and the Borderlands, we get a bit about the eyes and ears, like the network scattered throughout the world, the watchers and the listeners. Turns out, I think this is get bad for Elida because we learn that the largest network around the world is of the blues. Yes. So the Blue Aja has eyes and ears. So like the secret spy people, like the regular folks who do the intel reporting for the Blue Aja. Kind of like how Maureen has all those people who like See, know her. I have to tell you, I, oh, oh yeah. That's okay, what we're talking okay. about. We're not talking about like literal Blue Aja, Aja's Aes Sedai people. Although I do think that there are some. That's not what they're talking. Eyes and ears are people who do the spying and the reporting. Okay. But I do think that there are like more blues probably scattered yes doing like the reconnaissance stuff yeah because they do like them they're the secret agents because she even says yeah. out for um political and personal gain or something like that in so the text yeah so what she, what they're referencing here in the text is saying that the blue aja has a collective blue aja network so there's like eyes and ears and spies who work for the entire aja and then there's also eyes and ears for specific Aes Sedai. so uh, moraine has personal, personal spies. spies like the tinker lady yeah she yeah. had a bunch who were just like coming in cycling through so Probably some were hers and some were probably like the Blue Aja network. Okay. So that's kind of what we're getting here where all the Ajas do the spying, but the Blues is the most extensive and the Whites don't do it at all. So yeah. Cool. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Still bad for Elida. Bad for Elida. Yeah. Because she's not blue and there's no Blues here anymore. Nope. So yeah. All right. So then we get some more conversation about... White Cloak's doing stuff over on the West Coast. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and turns out we have the Panarch Amathera. I said that right? Yeah, you did. You <laughs> got it. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Has apparently vanished. Which is good. Oh my goodness. Where yeah. did she go? Yeah. Hey, it's good because that Although means it's that the- two months later. So- The hiding is working. Yeah, but I thought <laughs> like maybe- Although I did say she's done. Yeah, it's like, is she going to be reinstated? But I thought maybe she'd get, like, back in. She's got, like, her guards in her. Yeah, so. Like, she was only supposed to hide out for a couple days. And this is, like, two months later, and we're like, Paddock's gone. So what's the timeline? So, and that's what I'm talking about. It's like, what is the news these people that Aes Sedai are working off of here? Yeah. Right? Okay, but we do know that maybe an Aes Sedai was involved in her disappearance. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It was Elaine. Yeah, it was Elaine and yeah. Nynaeve, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's them. <laughs> yeah. So we get some internal thoughts of Elida just hating that nobody is consulting her on anything and they helped her get into this position and they know it. So they're yeah. all acting like they're all the Amarillin right now. And she's like, I'm the Amarillin. Yeah, sort of. And it's been two months. Yeah. So like, that's the other thing is like these thoughts, like she's clearly kind of been like taken out of the power because they're for, all having this months. meeting without her even saying anything. Yeah, like they're not asking for her opinion. They're not like looking at her. Yeah, she's about to shut that shit down though. Yeah. Yeah, she is. So, I mean, is this the first time that's happened in two months? Like what's going on here? That's the timeline span that we really got to like dissect. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Because this is the point that she thinks, oh, less than two months since everyone knelt to swear fealty to her. And now nobody even consults her. So that's how we know that it's been like about two months, less yeah. than two months. Yeah. So. So then we get some description for a long time. <laughs> yeah. A lot, a lot of description. Yeah. Pages yeah. and pages of Elida's personal decoration choices. Yeah, we do. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. She went to Home Sense. Yeah. Picked out some stuff. Went she got to a Marshalls. Gift card. Yeah. Got a good deal. Yeah. <laughs> from all over the world. Yes. All sorts of stuff. It's like moderately fancy is the best way to describe it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not like super, it's, it's like moderately. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I picked up on the fact that she really likes flowers and she has like flowers blooming, like roses blooming. Yeah. And I just need to have a little tiny callback. Back to Eye of the World? Back to Eye of the World. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I was going to talk about? Yeah. Where we knew there was an Aes Sedai who was Morghese's 
advisor. Yep. And when Rand falls into the garden, the outside world is still like in winter, even though it should be springtime. Yeah. And he notes that this garden is like fully blooming. And this was before I knew a single thing about a single Aja. Yep. And I said, maybe she's a green Aja because I speculated that the green Aja were like the nature. Yeah, like the gardeners. Nature power, <laughs> the gardeners. Yeah, yeah. So you were wrong and about now, that. <laughs> I think that it's so funny. You must have thought that was so funny. Oh, yeah. It's been hilarious. I said it's... Elida was green. It's like, so Like now great. that yeah. I know what a green Aja is. Yeah. And, and Elida... what a red is and who Elida well, is. Yeah. And... <laughs> I knew what red was at the time. But I have to tell you, I still wish that the greens were gardeners. <laughs> But I, yeah, that must yeah. have been really funny. So I'm going to talk about those paintings that she decorated with too when we get there. Yeah, oh yeah, the paintings yeah. are important. So yeah. that's cool. So anyway. I don't want you skipping that. Oh, I'm not going Sometimes to. furniture conversations come no, no, no. like. <laughs> I picked up on this was important. Okay, okay. I skip over the stuff that's not even remotely interesting or important. What you think. What you what think is. What I isn't. think <laughs> is interesting or important. Disclaimer. Okay. So we got no news of Elaine or Galad. That's pretty big. And more gays might become an issue considering they don't know where two of her children are. Yeah, two of the three are, like, missing. And, like, we know it's not going to be an issue because Morghese has her own problems yeah, right now. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, in their mind, it, it's kind of crazy what they do, too. Well, especially oh, considering Ravine wanted Elaine dead. Yes. Remember how that happened? That did, and Matt, Matt saved Yeah, that her. was the Dragon Reborn, right? Yeah. I need to, like, keep remembering... It's like, like what, what are all the things? Four books in, and I'm already messing up like books. Yeah. So it gets worse. I believe you. Yeah. Yeah. So we get some news that there is a red sister who is spying in the tower. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> yeah, there's a red sister in the tower spying. No. <laughs> what? Yes. No. <laughs> what? Okay. So what they're talking about is there's a red sister who's in the royal palace of Andor. Mm hmm. Not the tower. Well, that's what I meant. That's not what you said, though. <laughs> okay, so they got a, an undercover sister in the royal palace of Andor. I just typed my notes really fast. That's I meant okay. The, that's okay. I said tower instead of palace. That's okay. That's it. But it's an freaking, important distinction. Freaking sue me. And she's new. Yeah, I'm gonna sue you. It's <laughs> sued. <laughs> so she's newly raised. So she like doesn't have the eyes that I appearance. Uh -huh. And that's the whole big thing there. So. And then we okay. got we get the fact that Morghese is like putting forward her claim to the Kyrianan throne. That's big because her new lover, Lord Gabriel, keeps her occupied otherwise. Yeah. It's, it's not great. It's bad for Morghese. Yeah. I'm so, I mean, feeling for her. It sounds like Gabriel is the one who's pushing for Andor to go into Kyrian. Yes. And the yeah. ladies in this meeting, the Aes Sedai, think that Morghese is actually going to be able to win i'm gonna yes. like calm everything down over there yeah so keep in mind like morgaze has some like authentic claim to the kyrianan throne because of her husband terengale who right. was kyrianan so like she does have that where she who could died allegedly i don't remember what yeah. happened to him tom murdered him tom had him murdered tom, i don't think yeah. tom ever does anything himself. himself yeah so tom had him murdered tom murdered him tom got him dead so that was the whole Terran Gale. That's bit. because he was gonna get Morgay's murdered. Yes, I remember now. That was what Maureen was. Who was like, "Oh yeah, you're the silver, you're the gray fox, gray or whatever." Fox, yeah, fox, yeah. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know what you do. So there's that part too. But then also keep in mind that when we first met, like Gabriel, we didn't know exactly what was going on, but we had Tom and Matt on the border of Kyrian and Andor, and they were talking about how like the guards were like gonna be pulling back or invading or doing some crazy stuff. Yeah. So like it goes way, way back to that point too. So it is probably Gabriel who is doing some of that push because we also because we that whole deal. when Tom said, Oh, it's not like it's not like Morgays to, to not be nice to refugees. Yes. Yeah. And that's when I was like, Oh, there's yeah. something going on here. It's probably the Forsaken who's yes. being mean to refugees. Shoot. That's why they're forsaken. Oh, also, fun little tidbit here. The, uh, so the tower is sending fake letters from Elaine oh, to yeah. Morghese. Someone who's like faking her handwriting. Yeah, so fake letters are going. Well, she's probably not being compelled 
all the time because we do get in a little bit, in a minute here from yeah. Ravine, yeah. what that means to compel someone all the time. And you can't do that. Yes. And he, let's come back to it when yeah, we get there. Okay, let's yes, come back to that. Yes, let's I got that. some, I got some fun stuff to connect here. Okay. Too. So we have Gawain is still in the tower with his younglings. Yeah. Not exactly under control of the Aes Sedai. They no. are a little overzealous. A little bit. <laughs> and uh, they're skirmishing with white cloaks a lot. Yeah. And speaking of white cloaks, Petra Nile is up to something. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on. Petra Nile's probably missing his buddy Ordith. Yeah, the only impo- <laughs> the important part about the the things that we kind of hear here because it's not a lot, but we get that Petra Nile, the super old guy, mm-hmm. right? He is conducting secret negotiations to convince Altara and Murindi to cede land to Ilian to keep the Council of Nine from invading. And the important part is we know that Lord Brand is on the Council of Nine and Ilian, that and that's is Samuel. Samuel. Yeah. So now the tower is thinking maybe we should step in and replace Pedro Nile. Bad plan. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is some like undercover, like, you know, the tower is going to go and assassinate people to plant in their own. Like, it's like nah. conspiracy Stick theory to level. Your own shit, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then we learn here about the paintings that Elida has up in the Amarlin chambers. They are fashionable and nice. Everyone likes them. No, everyone hates them, but yep. I like them. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Why do you like them? Okay, go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so the, okay. Well, the first painting is of Bonwin, yep. the last red sister to be Amerlin a thousand years ago, who mishandled Archer Hawkwing. Yes. And was stripped of her Amerlin title for nearly destroying the tower. Yes. Now, Elida has this up as a constant reminder of the price of failure. Yeah. And now I get it. Okay. Not like 100%, but I appreciate the sentiment. Yeah. Let me tell you something that you don't know about me. Okay. Maybe. But you probably, you definitely don't know this. So I have a business card of a substitute teacher mm-hmm. who, when during my first pregnancy, he came in and substituted for my class when I went to a doctor's appointment or something. Okay. And he was in for another teacher before that, and then I started getting him in for me. And my principal at the time knew I was going to go on maternity leave and said to me, do you know of anybody, pass their names along, and I'm, and I'll consider them for your maternity position. Okay. Uh, or your term position. And I said, okay, great, thanks. So I kept my eye out, and this guy was really good. And so I had his business card, and I passed it along to my principal. Okay. He had given me a couple, and... Long story short, he now has a full-time permanent continuous position in the school that I work at. Okay. So I have his business card and I keep it in my purse to this day. And every, every time I clean that out, I put it back in the little pocket as a reminder that your actions can have significant impacts on people around you. I like that. Because if I did not pass the business card off to my principal... That guy right now would not be working in the position that he's working in. That's and pretty cool. And I it's like that. my actions yeah, yeah. that impacted him. Okay. And so I keep that as a personal reminder. So I appreciate that she has a physical, personal reminder of how your actions can fuck everything up. Yeah, and it's like, don't mess it up like Bonwind did. Yeah, basically. <laughs> like, hers is super <laughs> negative and mine is like, can a little be positive. A little more positive. Mine is but... positive, but on the same note, yeah. it's a reminder that it's things like, you don't, do. Don't fail the red aja. And like, like yeah. don't just like do things on a whim, think them through. Okay. Like that, I like that. Like I like that's that. like my personal thing on that. And then her second painting is same sort of, it's almost like her vision board. <laughs> a <It's> little like, <laughs> bit. Yeah. It's the picture of Rand fighting Baelzaman. In the sky, in the yeah, sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like, that's the charcoal drawing that's now been like stretched on canvas. That's like the Falma battle. I want that. That's my next painting. That's the next one. Let's get it right there. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. You're going to paint that one? No, no, no. I'm hoping <laughs> I'm someone I'm going to do a charcoal <laughs> sketch of it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get a charcoal we'll sketch if, done. We'll see if that turns out well. I'd like that. Anyways, anyway, yeah, let's talk about this. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is this is important. I feel no I one personally, else likes it. So I personally feel well because they're afraid of the dragon reborn. We kind of get that whole deal. We've we've seen it before, but 
I think that they should have, like, the next version because the sky battle at Falma is old news. We've got, like, you know, yeah. taking the stone of Tyr and Kalendor. Well, that's all they have, though. Like, get me a, a new bit... painting. And now he's in the waste. Like, get me some new paintings. I want new paintings. Mm, well. Yeah, it's not relevant. No, this is the only, <laughs> like, artistic <laughs> rendering yeah. that they have. No, I, I know, I know. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, I we got we to gotta catch up to the I times know, here. I know, I get it. Yeah. But... So at this point, the Aes Sedai are done. Their convo, they're starting to wrap up. They're like, good meeting, ladies. Good meeting. Good job, we, everybody. We talked about lots of stuff and we solved nothing. Way mm-hmm. to go, everybody. See you later. Again, in See you at lunch. See you at lunch. And yeah. then Elida's like, uh, I didn't dismiss anybody. I didn't give yeah. you permission to leave. And they're all like, huh? What? So that's what I'm saying. It's like, is this the first time she's really spoken up in two months? She's been in power. She's been the Amberlin. Or was it I like think a... I this is... It's a, been a gradual... I think that like she a, was a leading decline, it. decline, and now it's like she's trying to retake her power. I think so. I think that this is like the final straw for her. I think that like she'd probably been included. And like over time, she started inputting less and started getting like more and more irritated. Okay. And then like even if they meet like once a week yeah you know once the, every two they start weeks. like boxing her out yeah or something. it's like and, it, and not even on purpose like she might even just like they're effectual leaders okay maybe this like yeah, yeah. this group yeah. they're actually they all get along quite well they all have common goals and they all just sort of like sit round table board conference and the the president of the company doesn't need you know well it's I mean? also like all the ones who like helped take and still swan yeah like the whole like the yeah, posse oh yeah. the crew so yeah i know i think yeah. that it's been gradual over time and i think that this is just like the final straw for okay. her because she's like enough i'm the amarlin like i don't know she's probably <laughs> been thinking about it for a while keeping her up at night yeah yeah for you know? sure so yeah. <laughs> not that i can relate <laughs> or anything to you know you don't lose sleep over stuff like or, that so yeah no not me so <laughs> So she hasn't given them permission to leave. She wants to know about the search for that woman and her companions. Yeah, no need to say her name. No, that woman. Yeah. We all know. They're like, well, it's difficult to search for Swan considering we've told everybody she's dead. Yeah, so that's big news. Bad news. (laughs) Well, bad I mean, news bears, some would say. It's bad news bears for like Elida. It's not bad for Swan for people to assume that you're no, dead. That's, that's a pretty good great thing. News yeah. For Swan. It's bad yeah. news, but I mean like for this situation, they're looking for her, but they can't look out in the open because they've already publicly announced that yeah. she's been executed. Uh have you seen her- Swan? No, no, you said you chopped she's her head dead. off. <laughs> yeah, you said she- you executed her. Because they're hiding, they're covering up the fact that she escaped. Yep. It's a cover-up. That's yikes. what it is. Yep. Yikes, yikes. Not great, not great. So, Elida tells one of them to punish herself yeah, for Jolene, failing yeah. to find them. I like her strategy. She's like, okay, you got to come up with a punishment for yourself, and then if it's not good enough, I'm going to triple down on it. So, like, make sure you're going to punish yourself good enough. Super, yeah, super good. It's great. It's fine. I love it. It's all right. So (laughs) Elida's now like disciplining all of these Aes Sedai, telling them that they all need to write her reports. Bring me a seven, 45 point plan on what you've done. One point per day, what you're doing (laughs) to find these women. 45 days, we're back in business. 45 days, they're back in the tower. The tower's (laughs) back in business. Okay, find the blues, find Swan, find the Dragon Reborn. (laughs) Back in business. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. So I wanted to... Okay. Next topic. Yes. Javindra. Mm-hmm. That's the best name. I love it. Because there's like extra extra letters all over the place. Mm-hmm. But her job is to like find the blues who left and bring them back. So Elida wants to know what she's doing. Yeah, what's to your plan, lady? But in my mind, it's like, okay, so you drove all the blues out. You murdered all the blues who were still here. And now you're like... Hey, come on back to the tower. It's cool. We're fine now. Yeah, we're all united as one. Yeah. So Elida's like, we got to have the tower as a whole tower, one unit. But then how are you going to convince the Blues? It's a little delusional. To come back. This is where Elida starts losing me. Okay. This is, I I have to tell you. So I don't not like her, but she's starting to go off her rocker. Like, I don't think that she's Amarlin's seat material. Okay. (laughs) 
<laughs> uh, I think that she needs to be knocked down eight pegs. Okay, okay. But I 100% get where she's coming from. Yeah, it's just very like her, her brain's all over I the agree. place here. It's not great. We need the blues back. Oh, I can never trust them. Ah, oh, well, we got to get them back. Yeah, yeah. because she's really concerned about how they look from the outside. Yes, yeah. So now we have our next topic, Randall Thor. Yes, the most interesting, of course. Mm-hmm. So we have Terran soldiers who are in Kyrian. Yeah. Sent by the man who took the Stone of Tear. Yes, I said I can barely like hang on here. It's not they good. They can barely keep it together. Yeah, They yeah. can't even look at his picture. They're like sobbing and on their knees like ugh, yeah. get up get Shemarin. over it like, i thought you were all like freaking calm and cool and so stoic i said i like here's the thing if they've never really had to overcome anything to this level this is all new territory oh, so God, get over it it's deal with it yeah yeah it's not good not great so okay. but anyways this is a big thing because rand's army is going into Kyrian, but then yeah. we've got you know, Ravine slash Andor trying to get Morgays on the throne there. So what's really going to be happening here? Well, so here's the thing here. Yeah. Rand told us that he knows who he wants to sit on the sun throne. He does. He said that. He did say that. And now I think it's Elaine. Okay. No, you're going to have to explain that. Because she's Andor and his. But Elaine is supposed to be, she's daughter heir to Andor. Yeah, exactly. Okay. They're going to come to, like, like because it's Andor and Tyr coming in. Okay. And Rand and Elaine, I think that despite her stupid letters, they are still they are still in love <laughs> okay. and they're going to, like, okay, be okay. together. They're sure. probably going to get married, right? She's one of the three, probably. And... Rand's I, plan is to have Elaine on... I don't know if that was his plan from the beginning. But it might but turn into that. But I think it that? might turn into that. That's, <laughs> okay. that's what makes sense to me, because then that's, like, amicable. Okay, is Morgay's getting cut out of this deal com- Oh, or is it like a Morgay's reinstated for Andor, Elaine, and Kyrian situation? Like, is that what you're kind of getting at? Or where am, well, cause, am yeah. I just saying a lot of things right now? Maybe. Like, where's Morgay's is, is Maybe. not dead. <laughs> like, mm. No, no, no. I know that. Around. But like, Elida, no, not Elida. Elaine is someone else who could, who like knows how to do things. Yeah. And could like hold the seat for. Morgan, instead of Morgay's ruling like the entire thing, sure, that's just because she has the connection to Rand. Yeah, right. And Morgay's doesn't. So that's just where my brain went because it's sure. like, where's the meeting? Where's the two meeting? Gotcha. Okay. But then also like just maybe a... Morgay's is gonna die. Oh man. Okay. I, we got... I hope not. Well, she's gonna at some. point. It could be like okay. Everyone's Elaine... gonna die. Brad. Elaine takes Andor, and then Morgay's gets shifted to Kyrian because she has the claim because of her husband, ex-husband deceased husband yeah or good or um i hate it i hate this theory but what if gawain could become a king he's gonna become a king in kyrie but is that rand's plan no that's not rand's plan okay no way we actually we don't have to say that rand's plan is going to come true too like not everything rand wants has to come i have to clarify because i don't actually know last book what rand was thinking and did you mean gawain or galad Galad. I always get them mixed up. Okay. Because it's Galad's father who is Tigraine. Nope. Nope. The other way. <laughs> Tigraine's, Tigraine's Rand's mom. Rand's mom. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, it does. Let's get it right. <clears throat> okay, so. <laughs> God. Terengale. Terengale. <laughs> Terengale is Galad's, Galad's father. Yes. And he's Kyrianan. Yeah. Like royalty Kyrianan. Yeah. Damondred. Yeah. And that's... Yeah. Taryn Gale is Damondred. So what if... Yeah. Gawain comes to claim the throne. Of what? Kyrian. Okay. Gawain's gonna come in. That's okay, an okay, alternate okay. theory. Because it's his dad too. It's his dad. Yeah. I need to think on this one. Yeah. I'm just putting it all together. I'm just like throwing things out that my brain is connecting. Okay. I'm putting puzzle pieces together. Yeah. And um, I think a piece is lost under the couch. Okay. I have to go look for it. I have to <laughs> gotta go do that family flow chart. I gotta. Okay. And how is how is Rand connected? I to gotta. Them? I gotta go look for the like couple lost pieces on okay. the floor that okay. the cat like <laughs> ate. We have the entire episode the, dedicated to relationships. And then so. I'll get the puzzle together. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We'll get to. I think that we'll get to Kyrian in this book. Okay. So we'll it seems like an important plot point here. So. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, anyway, back to this because we get that Elida is thinking about Swan and what she knew. 
Yes. And like what she told. A whole bunch. Almost everything. Yeah. We get that she said something about Moraine being involved, which I was worried about. I was hoping that that was kept from Elida. I was wrong. Yeah. I mean, Elida was already suspicious of the two. Oh, yeah. So like there was that. And she just like hates them so much. And she hates the Blue Aja. But come back and be buddies. Yes. Be strong together yes yeah and then elida pronounces randolph or the dragon reborn he's the real deal and the last battle is coming but they have no idea where rand is right now yeah so this is like two good pieces of news so i appreciate the fact that elida and this is one thing i'll give her points for she's saying that rand is the literal dragon reborn like that seems like a big step for the white tower to be like this is the guy we've been waiting for that's important. Yeah. That's something that Swan did not do. She was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, and then it's like too late. Mm-hmm. So like that's big points for Elida for doing that. And then also the good news is that they don't know where Rand is. They got yeah, no clue. Yeah, that is good <laughs> so, news. I love that part. Well, they would never suspect the waste. No. <laughs> He's so. doing a whole like IEL business right now. So. Uh-huh. He went there through portal stones. You wouldn't, even, you wouldn't understand. You wouldn't understand. You got to be there to, to Geography it, so. joke. Yeah. You have to be there. <laughs> So we also get that Elida really wants Rand in the tower right now, safely shielded until he fights the last battle. Yeah. And then after ranting and ranting and ranting, Elida dismisses them finally. Yeah. So this is really, really bad. These are the points where she loses like a thousand points in my eyes. Yeah. Because one, she wants Rand in the tower, safely shielded until he fights the last battle. Yeah. Like what kind of game plan is that where Rand, being the Dragon Reborn, just has to sit in the tower, shielded, under control of Aes Sedai until it's like, yep, now's the time. Go fight the Dark One. How is that a plan? Yeah, it's not a plan. Like, that doesn't make sense to me either. Yeah, but, okay. So, you have to think. So, her perspective from a Red Aja is men who can channel are very, very dangerous. Sure. They're going to go crazy. They're going to hurt lots of people. And we really need to protect the world from these very dangerous men. Yeah. And so if we look at the world from a Red Aja perspective, like, yes, it's written so that we don't like them. Yeah. And that yeah. they're just like freaking, I don't know, they just hate men so much. Yeah. It's It's written so that we're like, oh, they're bad guys because they just like hate men without cause. But they have cause. It's because they, they hate, hate them. them. Yeah. But so in her mind... She's like, it's annoying that we have to keep this incredibly dangerous man yeah. alive and keep him with the power. So how, but she knows that the prophecies say they're going to need him. So this is the big question though. When we talk about Rand having to be at the last battle to beat the Dark One, what does that battle actually look like? Is it a literal Rand versus the Dark One showdown of channeling the One Power? Like, does that make sense? Is it Rand in a fist fight? Is it something entirely different? Like, Is it Harry and Voldemort? I don't understand that reference. Harry and Voldemort, at the end, it's like the Battle of Hogwarts, and like everyone's fighting everybody. Yeah. And then at the end, ev- like people are dead, th- things are blown up, everything's destroyed. And then at the end, it comes down to Harry and Voldemort doing their spell at each other. Doing like a spell battle. And but... then Harry wins. So, like. So, is that the question? Is it. Li- but again, Harry and Voldemort are like two people gonna that are shot. Like, I get that. I, I want to finish this thought process here, but they're two people blasting their stream of wand power at each other for yeah. lack of a better term uh-huh. but then is it like rand who is a literal mortal sure he's like a reincarnation of a soul but like versus the dark one yeah being like an entity that is yeah so well, like Rand's are they like gonna so super powerful so yeah probably but that's the question it's like that is that gonna be i the... think it's you know what i i think that jk rowling got it from somewhere and i think that she got enough from these books that she probably got something okay, similar. Okay. Like, I think that that's like a very watered down yeah. Harry Potter version. And I think that this, the last battle is going to be just that. I think it's actually going to be like everybody who's ever been involved basically helping the battle. Okay. Battle, battle, battle. And then I think it's going to come down to Ram doing something in the end. Okay. Like final showdown. Yeah. And I've never made such a bold prediction yeah, okay. about the last battle before. It, that's the hard part. Like the conceptual, but like that's what's the. That's the only thing I have to relate it to. Yeah. It's like, what's the metaphorical that's the only battle thing in my versus. Brain yeah. I like that it. has any, okay, any you, connection. You said Harry Potter stuff. So we have to drink a drink, a drink here. 
Yeah, I did. Okay, well, cheers. Cheers to the Harry Potter showdown. Oh, I love my bubblegum vodka. Yeah. That one's so good. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> okay. So even though it's a terrible plan and it would never work and it's like the worst thing I've ever heard, I 100% get where Elida's coming from here. This, even this idea of having a man who can channel and not immediately gentling him yeah. is so difficult for her to wrap her head around. So the fact that she's like, okay, I get that we need him. But I need control over him. Also, the point where she doesn't believe that he's going to willingly go to his death to save the world. Like, she doesn't buy that. That's because whatever her past trauma has been has yeah. led her to believe <laughs> that men are not trustworthy. It's something. And they don't follow through. Okay. <laughs> it's something. Did you know that hurt people hurt people? Oh, nice. That's good. That's deep. Yeah. That's way too deep for right now. I know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> But I think Elida's a hurt people. <laughs> okay. So everybody leaves except for Alviarin and Elida. And we get some political insights here. Oh, because yeah, we do. We get why a white is the keeper of, what's it? The Chronicles? Keeper of the Chronicles. Yeah. Yeah. Because I always call her just keeper in my brain. Yeah. Keeper of the Chronicles. Because normally the keeper is raised from the Same. Aja that... You came, yeah, came like, from because, yeah, yeah. like, you you super trust each like other. Like, Swan and Liana were both blue. We're both blue. Yeah. And so, Alviarin is white, and we get that she's keeper because all of the reds eagerly followed Elida. Yes. And the whites didn't. Yes. And not so, exactly. They were, like, weren't to- like they totally They weren't 100% on board. On board. Yeah. And so, Elida's power move was making Alviarin her keeper so that the whites stayed with Alviarin. Yeah. And she like the Reds basically them. needed the whites to follow suit so that they could actually pull off the they coup. They could do this plan. And yeah. that's why Alviar and Elida are having this like, you know, equal to equal showdown mm-hmm. where they both feel like because they are. Because she's like, oh, yeah. you wouldn't be here, Elida, if it wasn't for me. So like, show me some GD respect. Exactly. So. Right? Yep. Yeah. It's all bad. It's all, all bad. Right. So they're staring at each other. An accepted knocks on the door with a message for Elida. Mic drop, please. Because fucking Master Fane is here. <laughs> Pen Fane is here. He showed up. I love it. Oh, it's so good. I bet Fuck. you. Oh, he was like, hey, I'm going to the tower. Holy he did tell us that. Holy motherforking shirt balls. He told us at the end of the last book, he was like, I'm going to Tar Valen. He did say I'm going to Kaelin first. Do you remember what I said? Do you remember my prediction? No. <laughs> I don't. What did you say? That he's not going to get to the tower. Oh, yeah, you did say that. I and then, that. like, I literally opened the book and, like, 10 pages in. Yeah. And he's at the tower. No. I've, like, never been more wrong so fast. Oh, yeah, that was totally wrong. It's it's hilarious because <laughs> he's here. To be fair, though, it has been two months. Yeah. Ish since he said that. Okay. Okay. And we get that he showed up two days ago. Yeah. So, like,. Maybe he did go to Caneland. I don't know. I don't know what he was going to do there. Sure. My whole thing was like, oh, he's going to get go to Caneland first, get caught up, get sidetracked. We're going to enter. We're going to see what's going on. Yeah. And we miss all of it. Yeah. And he's just like freaking flip in here okay okay like, so what the heck is he doing and under the name pat and fane is he nuts well you got a flippity flop but this is the thing pat and fane is gonna have a heck of a time because he got finished up with pedro nile yeah doing his little shady business with the white cloaks he scoop on over yeah to the white tower they have some fun it's good it's gonna be a good time i hate it so much. fires of heaven we're gonna have fun here oh my god yeah <laughs> Okay, well, before we yeah, yeah. switch perspectives into yeah. Fane's A little brain, bit of important information there. Don't forget. We get some information that there's yeah. a new mistress of novices. Yeah, Sylviana. What was Shiriam? Shiriam was the mistress of the novices. Yeah, no, where is she now? That's a good question. What was she? Was she brown? No, she was blue, right? What was she? Mm, I don't know if we know. I'd have to check before I say. But anyways, she's not here. Not here, you say? She's not here. Well, she's not the mistress of novices. Well, and when I say she's not here, did she leave or is she dead? Yeah. That's the question. Uh, 
I never really liked her very much, so it's okay. <laughs> um, okay. She liked spanking those girls too much. Well, you know, discipline. My, uh, um, but hey, this is the thing. Switching. Yeah. Switching. That's space. Sorry. I don't 100% know if we know Sherry M's Aja right now. I think so I that we say. probably do. We probably but do. I'm just not going to say. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just not sure if we know, like if you know what she is yet, Aja wise. Oh, okay. Like we know what she is, but you don't necessarily know. I just got to figure out if we know collectively, you you included. If I know. If you know what she is. I'll figure it out. Got it. I don't think it's that important because it's either not. she's gone or she's dead. It's just why she's gone like or she's know. dead. It doesn't okay. matter. Okay. Elida hates this situation with Alviar and... But she's going to keep her in the dark when it comes to Fane. Ah, power flip. There you go. Which is like just what Fane fucking wants. That is exactly what Fane wants, yes. All right. And then we're going to get a perspective (laughs) change into Fane's brain. Yeah. And we're going to take a little bit of a break and come right back. Okay, back from a little break. We are in our perspective change. We have Pat and Fane entering with Elida and Alviarin just like staring at each other. And Fane senses this tension. Ooh, he loves it. And he is all about it. Yeah, he's like dry washing his hands. He's oh, great. it's so gross. <laughs> I hate that phrase. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so gross. I hate it. I yeah. hate it, hate it, hate it. So he likes this very much. He senses the division in the tower. And he thinks that he can break Elida because she won't bend. It's very much like the reeds in the wind where they will bend in the wind. But the tree will break. Yeah, we got it. So. We got the saying. Love it. Okay. It's great. It's great. <laughs> okay. So I also picked up on a teeny tidbit. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Where Fane thinks he can sense Elida knowing something about him. Okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? Elida? Yeah, I think so. No. Uh, no, I see the place. It's Al- Alviarin. Oh. Yeah. Because she's sweeping out of the room, her eyes brushes across him, she's looking at him, and he unconsciously huddles and hunches his shoulders, and his upper lip flutters into like a half snarl, and then on occasion, he had the feeling just for an instant that she knew too much about him, but he could not have said why. Oh, I thought he was talking about Elida. Okay. Yeah. No, Okay, but somebody there knows too much about him, and I picked up on it. Okay. Okay. All any, right. any idea why? Does no. it switch because of who it is or? No. Okay. All I right. still don't know. Okay. <laughs> but I picked it up. Yeah. That's, that's all. I noted it. Put that nugget in my brain. Okay. For later. Okay. Yeah. So we get Fane thinking about the important things that are kept here in the tower and they are worth being patient for. So we have the Horde of Alir and his dagger. Yeah. Which is a piece of him that if he recovers, might help make up for what he has lost. Yeah. Because he can't return to Eridol slash Shatter Logoth. Yeah, It's too that's dangerous true. because he might get trapped there again. Okay, so prediction time here. Ooh. So this is the first little tidbit here where it's like, Thane doesn't want to go back to Shatter Logoth. He wants to get no, his little... No, more death doesn't want to go back there. This, one and the same. At yeah. this point, they're okay, one okay, and the same. Okay, okay, okay. So he okay. wants to get his dagger back to get that like lost piece of himself to have that like item. So he doesn't want to go back to Shadow Logoth because he's afraid he's going to get trapped there again. Yeah. So is this some sort of like little tidbit where it's like, oh, can Fane get trapped in Shadow Logoth? Is that like, you know, fortune telling here? Mm. It's like tiny little tidbits here. Is that like in, the, in the future? So. No? Okay. I don't think it works that way. I think okay. he's scared of it working that way. Just but in case. I now have a question for you. Sure. Why is it bad if he gets the dagger at this point? What do you mean? So we really didn't want Fane to have the dagger in the Great Hunt. Yeah, because Matt. Because of Matt. Matt's connection with it. And we needed Matt, like that tie to be severed. And we needed the dagger for yep. Matt to live. Now, Matt doesn't need the dagger. Sure. And it's just like hanging out. Yeah, we don't really have any reason to not want Fane to have the dagger besides the fact that it's like a crazy murder weapon. That he's like weapon. bad guy. Well, yeah. also the, the the dagger itself does like some really bad kind of like damage. stuff. And but it's like also- But Fane himself does bad damage. No, so no, but, like, but also keep in mind, the corruption that was in the dagger, we don't 100% like know how that all works. The dagger itself like had some of the corruption and Matt with the dagger would have like corrupted people. So it's bad if that dagger gets out for okay, other reasons. So it's, okay. We don't really know, but like it's, we should be cautious. Bad. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah. No, I we, appreciate we, that. I, yeah. I like that you, I like you walking that through me because yeah, the dagger itself is bad. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So I also just like the tidbit that he also doesn't even really know who he is anymore. Oh yeah. He's transfigured now. Yeah. He's a uh, more than the sum of the pieces. Sure. So we get the real reason for this meeting. And it turns out that Elida is using Fane to get to Rand. Yep. And Fane is using Elida to get to Rand. Yeah, they're using each other mutually to get to Rand. They both want Rand. For different reasons. For completely different (laughs) reasons. But, I mean, it's like kind of the same reason. I want to know what Fane said when he, like, showed up all dirty and tattered to, like, get Elida to get him all dressed up in a nice new coat. I mean, he's good at... Treat him well private audience with the Amerlin. He's good at knowing what to say. Like he weaseled his way in with Turak of the Shanchan with Pedra Nile of the White Cloaks. Like he's in there. He knows what's up. He knows what to say to people like their wants and desires. See, Pat and Fane is flexible. Yeah. Oh, yes. Very much so. Yeah. Out of all of the people. He can change plans. He is flexible and that is good for him. Yeah. It's like not great. Not good for the good guys, but great for the bad guys. Yeah. But also he's not exactly like on the bad guy side exactly. So, okay. So she tells him that he must tie a string to one that Rand trusts. And he thinks that this is a good partnership, even if she is an Aes Sedai. Yeah. Okay. What's the plan? Uh, Tie the string to one of the few he trusts. Yeah. Who is one that... Rand doesn't trust very many people. No. Who does he trust? Rand trusts Matt. Okay. He, they might have the impression that he trusts Egwene. Sure, I can see that. Or Nynaeve. Anyone like that he grew up with. Okay, Emmonsfield 5, yeah. Elida might have the impression that he trusts Moraine. Yes. Even though he does not. (laughs) No. (laughs) But this is all Elida's perspective, right? Yeah, yeah. So... And Fane's perspective, like who he thinks is the best option. But there aren't very many options. And she doesn't know that Elaine is like canoodling with him. No, not yet from what we so... can tell. So, yeah, okay, okay. Okay, so then we get a perspective change and this is a good one. I'm yeah. really, really excited to talk about this. You know, I just got to say the Fane one wasn't that bad this time. Like there's usually creepy, creepy tidbits. Yeah, it's And gross. here it's like, it's, it's medium bad. It's not that it's bad. It's not actually not even that bad. Yeah. I agree. It's like, okay. Yeah. I think it depends on, like, where he is. Like, when he's, like, scavenging in the woods and, like, murdering Murdral. Like, yeah. he gets into this, like, really dark place. But when he's, like, has to pretend to be a human. Yeah. His yeah. mindset is more human and less, like, it. gross animalistic. So. Great actor. He's a method actor. He really is. Yeah, he's great. Oh. Fantastic. Really gets into the role. You should see his improv. Oh, jeez. Amazing. So, perspective change to Ravine. Yes. And I have a question for you. Sure. You might not know it. But I think I know it. Okay. Ah, that's a weird way to say it. Oh, that. yeah, that is. Okay, what? Have we had a Forsaken perspective before? No. Yeah. No. This is no. our first Forsaken perspective. I was just thinking, like, have we seen a Lanfear perspective? No. We've seen her in, like, dreams. Yeah, yeah. Like, Perrin's dream and things like that. Yeah, I don't... I think you're right. I don't, I don't think, think we have. Her, yeah. So... This is a big deal. It is. So we have him in some room, obviously in the palace in Camelin. Yes. And he has a woman under compulsion here and she's repeating what he has told her. Yeah. We get a note about how compulsion works. We do. This is good. Turns out very few people have strength of self. So firm that their minds search unaware for crevices through which to break the compulsion. Okay, go. Which is so interesting because this is exactly what happened to Nynaeve. Yeah. This is the answer. This is the answer that we were waiting for. Three seconds later. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, three seconds, but also for some people who waited for the whole books, book. Yeah. It's like, you're it's like how years. did Nynaeve <laughs> break the compulsion? Yeah. So, what, her, her pulling on her braid really helped her break the compulsion. No. But there's also more to it. Oh. Yeah. So hey, tell me. Besides the whole like Nynaeve got out because her mind was working in the behind the scenes aspect of like your subconscious trying to break through the compulsion because like really firm strength of will. We also had a really, really fun tidbit with Ravin, Ravine and Morgays. Yeah. Can I say it? Yeah. This is OK, because I do know this. This is the point. OK, go. 
Okay, tell me if I'm right. Sure. But is this where she tries to sneak a message to Matt? Boom, there you go. About how she loved her talks with Sherry Am? Yeah, tell Elaine that I really love our talks with Sherry Am. Because you pointed that out to I me did. as weird. I did. And like, it seems like she's fighting the compulsion. Yeah, it's like send a weird cryptic message to Elaine that wouldn't make sense. Why would you love spending time with your private talks? Well, the issue is they did hear it. They heard the message and they just thought that Matt messed up the message. They didn't think that the... Me- <laughs> They were like, oh, that's a secret message yeah. and she's in trouble. But that was Morgay's trying to like worm trying. a message in, in front of Ravine. Yeah. Like to get a message out to like no like notify Elaine that something was wrong. So yeah. Yeah, but they just thought Matt messed up the message. Yeah. So shoot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So after Ravine is done with this woman, he releases the man that's also standing there. Yeah, it's another guy. That- another, another regular dark friend. Oh, yeah, Minor Noble. Yeah. Whatever. Just dark friend guy. Yeah, yeah. And so, get out of here. Now, <laughs> a woman speaks to Ravine out of nowhere, and he's surprised and grabs for Sidene, and it's Lanfear. Yeah. Stepping through a power doorway. Yeah. Slash gateway. It's a gateway. Yeah. Yeah. In the middle of the chamber, and he gets a slight tingle and a faint chill when she channels yeah which is so interesting because yes. that was when rad was like i think i felt something yes and i was like you didn't feel anything yeah yeah so we yeah. get from a forsaken then that's a thing so a man i love that that's a thing i love this confirmation. yes a man who can channel can feel when a wem- one woman embraces sidar and is it the same for a woman? We don't know. We do know from this chapter, if you were paying attention. I wasn't. Okay, I'll I tell you when we get to there. This. I paid yeah. attention to this. Which is really good, but we get more and I'll point it out. Okay. So we get confirmation that the woman that he was talking to and compelling yep. <laughs> is an Aes Sedai and it's the one that That's Elida, the undercover one. Yeah, and crew, we're talking about like this is the tower spy. So yeah. like so much for <laughs> fucking that. Which is great. It's and such a good little tip. I know. And they share contempt for the weakness of Aes Sedai now. Oh yeah, the Forsaken hate them so much. Yeah, this isn't like the good old days. But we also get a really good piece of information here where Ravine is like, hey, these like untutored children, whatever, they're terrible, the worst, they're, they're so weak. Aes Sedai. And Lanfear says, how would you like these untutored children to put a circle of 13 around you? So that's implying that if there's a circle of 13 then they could take on Ravine. Yeah, wasn't well, the circle of 13 to We've heard a tidbit turn of it. somebody to the dark side? That's what we've heard. We've heard about could the reference. Could a circle of 13 also turn somebody to the light? We don't know that. That's the thing. We've only heard the circle of 13 in reference to like 13 sisters and 13 fades turning someone over to the dark side against their will. Hmm. Well, it's obviously something because this this forsaken wouldn't like it yes so yeah so also ravine just for you know making sure we note all the little tidbits here ravine notes that he can't and people don't see the weaves of the opposite half of the power yeah yeah just so if you okay. weren't 100 percent sure you can't you okay. can't see him all right so lanfear lets ravine know that the rest of the forsaken have been invited to the forsaken party it's a surprise party yeah you get together and you yell at each other. It's great. <laughs> well, they're going to be here shortly. And like Ladfer showed up first because... So he doesn't think it's like an attack. Yeah. Which, it's great. Oh, so it's like if they all show up at the same time, like, yeah, that could look like an attack. Yeah. And he's like, ah, and then everyone fights and they all kill each other. Yeah. <laughs> which I personally am in favor of. But well, it sounds like that's what's going to happen anyway. So It doesn't happen. No, 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 not yet. Oh, all in the, the future. All the Forsaken <laughs> are all just going to end up killing each other. It sounds okay. like none of them get a lot. Like, yeah. I don't know. So then we get Samuel. Yeah. With his showing up, he's face arriving. scar. Face scar. Face scar. Now we met somebody with a big face scar in Berlon that ran. Now I just thought of this right now in Berlon at the Stag and Lion. Sure. There was a guy sitting in the corner with like a big face scar, and I kept calling him face scar. Oh yeah. And he was like staring at Rand, like dancing and stuff. Yeah. And Rand was like, "Ooh, who's that?" Yeah. And then we like hear nothing about it, and then a fade shows up. Yeah. Ravine. <laughs> okay. Okay, sure. Yeah. That was Ravine. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I figured it out. <laughs> yeah. No, most likely not. <laughs> okay, well. There's very little evidence to that, so 
That's... I like it. It's good. It's good. Nah, there weren't four seconds for yet. <laughs> but it's a little, little early still. I'm trying to piece these together. I can't believe that you remember. You're just like a really yeah. <laughs> Are you impressed with my memory? Yeah, I'm. I kind of forgot about that guy. Oh no, face scar. I it's great. Like, Scarface. I Scarface. just like I. Why are we introduced to people like that if we're not going to hear from them again? Hmm. It's a good question. Yeah, it was okay. okay. So that's Samuel Scarface. Oh, Samuel, right? Samuel Scarface. Yeah, and then we get Grandol showing up. Yeah. Who's like plumply pretty? Yeah. Compared to Lanfear. Compared to Lanfear, so like everybody is like medium pretty compared to Lanfear. Exactly. She's got something going on for herself. So. Yeah. Turns out. So. Turns out she, like, loves to live this, like, life of luxury, and Ravine thinks that she's very wasteful. Yeah, I mean, Grendel does have a lot of, like, delusions, you could say. Ah. Yeah, just a a thought. Okay. This is also where Grendel is, like, clearly crazy, compelling some people, and Ravine is, like... This is bad. This is like next level compulsion here that yeah, you're doing. So like you're literally destroying these people that you yeah. can use for your benefit. But she also doesn't like people who are just regular people. She needs like people with status. Yeah, because then she's like, haha, I'm better than you. Yeah. You think you're so great? Nah, you're not. Yeah. Now so like you're she... my footstool. You're my wine holder. Yeah. You're my seat. She takes people apart. <laughs> she, it's it's little... not good. Yeah. I kind of like her. <laughs> Yeah, why not? It's all good, yeah. She's also decked out in, like, so much jewelry. Yes. Like, she loves this life of luxury. She does. So, these are two that we're meeting for the first time, by the way. Yes, that is true. So that's Like, fun. we've heard the names. For the names, meeting them for the first meeting time. Them. yep. Love it. So, Grando mentions that nearly half of the surviving Chosen are in one place, and no one is trying to kill anyone. Good and- Good that's job, amazing. everybody. Amazing. What a fun party. Yeah. Yeah. And they so, don't work together very well. So Yeah, like, it turns out that Ishmael did manage to keep everyone at each other's throats. Yeah, so Ishi was kind of like the guy who made sure everyone was fighting between them. Which is kind of what is that what parents saw in his dream when they were all fighting? Possibly. It's a little bit speculative because we don't hundred percent know, but possibly. Yeah. But yeah, they for sure 100% fight between each other. And now the fact, we kind of get a head count here. This is big because Lanfear kind of points out like, hey, Grendel's got a point. There were 13 Forsaken who are like immortal. these- The immortal chosen ones, right? And Have now we, four are just like dead. Four are dead. So we got Balthamel, Aegonor, yep. yep. Bilal, and Ishamael, which yep. is kind of confirmation for you that even the other Forsaken are calling them dead. So like, yes, hey, sir. that's big news. Yes, sir. And then we love it because- She's like, Asmodian has betrayed, has betrayed us. us. Uh, and this is the like Asmo thing yeah. that she said she was going to do. Yeah, she did. And she did it. Yeah. Yeah. And so they want to know, or Ravine wants to know, well, how did Asmodian do that? He doesn't have enough courage. How did he actually betray us and go to the loose there inside? Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, he's kind of a wiener guy, so like... Yeah, and Ravin <laughs> asks if Randall Thor is really so strong that he could take on Lanfear head-to-head, as she implied. Okay, so this is the other little tidbit of information that kind of gives us more here, too. There's like maybe one more thing, too. So, Ravin thinks to himself, you know, I could take on Lanfear one-on-one, and so could Samuel probably take on Lanfear in a head-to-head battle. So when he's asking, like, oh, could Randall Thor actually do it too? He's also thinking, like, oh, well, I could too. So it's not that big of a deal. But then he thinks Grandel would likely link with Lanfear if either of the men would try anything. Yeah. So another reference to the whole linking. I'm being stronger because there's two of them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. So, but yeah, Rand is LTT reborn. So, yeah, he's probably that strong. Yeah. Yeah. And then we learned that it was LTT who gave Samuel the scar on his face. And he chose to keep the f- the face scar as yeah, like a reminder. As a reminder. <laughs> it's good. I'm for it. It's like a business card in the wallet. It's great. I'm glad that you didn't choose the face scar. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes though, sometimes a scar can be a good reminder of like your bad decisions lead to bad things. That's true. Yeah. So like. I, I actually appreciate that too. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm fine with it. Yeah. I'm good with it. It's about being introspective. It is. And that's like the most important thing that a human can be. So yeah, we're getting deep. Super deep. Okay. Back on to the important topics though, because Randall Thor is out and about. 
Yep. Clearly has his modium by his side. Yep. Picking mm-hmm. off the Forsaken. What are we going to do about him? What are we going to do? All right. So the Forsaken <laughs> proceed to take a bunch of like jabs at each other. Yeah. It's like, let's not talk about anything important stuff. Let's just like make fun of I each other. I actually thought it was pretty important information. It's funny As far stuff. as like character building. Yes. This was very interesting. You can me. also like see the relationship. It's, just, it's like these people who have known each other for a long time. They went through like the war of power at the breaking of the world together. And they got bound away yeah. in Shale Ghoul together. And now they're out together. It's like they've been through some stuff together. Yeah. I actually really like this. It's I like so this funny. character building. I like liked this arc i like where we got some backstory and background yeah without any like good guys around where they had to like pretend pretend you know and it's not from the perspective of like an unreliable narrator yeah although it always is it is but, but it like also it's is not like... from the perspective of like rand yeah trying to piece together trying what's to happening figure out yeah. what the forsaken are talking about so let's talk about what they talk about okay i took notes I, i'm not sure how deep you want to get into this okay well, the next thing I have is that Samuel doesn't think it matters if the Forsaken get killed. Okay. Because he's going to whittle talk, away the dead wood. I want to talk about the insults here first. Okay, go, you go. Okay, so Grandal starts off by talking to Lanfear, and she's like, hey, Lanfear, if this is really LTT, why didn't you try and snuggle into bed with him? And, like, we know that she's already, she already she's tried. working on that. She's tried a few times, and it's not working so well so far. Yep. But Lanfear says, well, it's not LTT himself. It's just him reincarnated. So I'm not trying to do that. Yeah. So she's lying about trying to not do that. But yeah. she totally is. Oh, the whole this whole thing is like Lanfear's plan. And it's like fucking working. It's so good. Lanfear is such a boss bitch. Like she <laughs> is such a boss lady. I can't take it. I love Lanfear so much. This plan is fantastic. And they all love it and eat out of her freaking forsaken hand yes okay now we also got to talk about this because grandal also talks about how it may be as many believe that all are born and reborn as the wheel turns but nothing like this has ever happened that i have read about a specific man reborn according to prophecy who knows what he is yeah so that's huge so even the forsaken don't even understand fully well no what it means to be like Rand slash the dragon reborn versus just the dragon. Like this is new territory for all the Forsaken. So that's kind of like really important information that they don't know what they're getting themselves into. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. And that's when we get to the whole Samuel bit. I see. Yeah. Because there's more insults after that. Yeah. And then this is just the part where, you know, a long time ago I was like, oh, maybe Rand is somehow going to connect with, LTT and LTT is going to be able to teach him. Like that was my other right. theory. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think that somehow that's going to be right. Okay. Because with Grandal being like nothing like this has ever happened and this is somebody who clearly knows her shit. She's been around okay. for so long and I think that somehow Luce Theron is going to come back and I've predicted like a force ghost. You know? Okay. Do you remember? Do you remember me predicting that? Yeah, Force that? Ghost. Force Ghost. So, like, I think that LTT is going to come back in some way to, like, connect with Rand instead of it being just, like, another soul iteration. I think that this is different. Okay. And so I, he's a unique case. That's, like, put a pin in it. Okay. I like it. Okay. So then this is where Samuel's like, whatever. Whittle away the Deadwood. The other Forsaken don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't seem like he even thinks that Rand will win Tarmin Guide in any way. Yeah. Like, he's like, Rand yeah. really going to win against the Dark One? Even if we, like, play and pretend this yeah. game. It's eh. like, yeah, he's got Asmodian, but he doesn't have the 100 Companions this time. Yeah. And then this is the best insult ever. Lanfear throws it <laughs> so much shade. He's it's like, great. well, Samuel... <laughs> Always lost against LTT anyway. Yeah, life was like, oh, I can't remember. How many times did you go up against LTT and, and win? win? Oh, was never? it was it was it, how many times can't Was get... it never? Yeah, it was never, right. Yeah. That's right. So Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a fight between the Forsaken <laughs> where it's like they almost all blow each other up right now. Yeah. So this is this is the important part. So and this is where I'm talking about the extra information. Okay. About how people can feel the power. Mm-hmm. So this fight that almost happens. Ravine distracts Samuel because Samuel sees the tension happening. So he's gathering up the power to do like something to get the upper hand as Ravine like senses that he's doing. And then Ravine stops him by distracting him. 
and thinks that neither of these women could know what had almost happened. Okay. They couldn't feel him gathering up the power. Okay. So that means that the men can feel when the women are doing something because they get that sensation. The women can't. The women don't have that Ability. same. Which is exactly what we saw with Elaine and Egwene with Rand. Right. They didn't they sense didn't anything. Feel anything. But I thought that I chalked that up to them not being as strong. Like I thought that was a strength thing, but no, okay. But here it's like the women don't feel things. Okay. Good. Good to know. Yeah. Which is maybe, side note, why Lanfear was like I really want a power that we can both tap into. Yeah. Right? Like <laughs> That's getting even deeper into it, like the why behind it. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, like as a woman who like wants equality, I'm like, fuck this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let me figure it out. Well, the powers aren't the same. Right? That's the no, whole point. No, they're not. And yeah. so she's like, well. We'll learn we... more about that too. So. I bet. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is where Ravina is like, all right, Lanfear, let's hear your plan. And... She says that it was Ishmael's mistake trying to use fear and bullying on Randall Thor because that won't work. Yeah. And we know that won't He's work. He's got the two rivers stubbornness. Yeah. And you know what else won't work? Lanfear pretending to be some like <laughs> Kyrianin woman who took a nap and woke up in a portal stone world. Anyway, but has she tried not wearing pants? No. She tried not wearing a shirt and he wouldn't look. No, she had the shirt. She didn't have pants. Oh, she so yes, she re- did try that. <laughs> Didn't work. Didn't work. So now she needs four of them to work together, yeah. and the rest of the Forsaken don't matter. Yeah, the four it should be good. Why share the power if they don't need to? Yeah. And then this is where I said, hmm, the rest, can I name them? Probably not. So <laughs> this is where I was going to test myself. Okay, so who's dead? Oh, you already said that. I know, but do you remember them? That's part of the Bilal? challenge. Yeah. Ishmael, yeah. Balthamel, yeah. Agenor, yeah. dead. Okay. Who, in this meeting. Who went over to the si- uh, to Rand's side? Asmodian. There we go. We got five. Okay. In this meeting. Yeah. Lanfear. Yeah. Samuel, Grandel, Ravine. Yeah. Okay. We need two more. Now, oh, that's nope. it? No, nine. That's nine. We need four more. I'm bad at math. You yeah, we need four, four more. more. They said four. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm bad There's at math. There's four. Okay. <laughs> so we have Demandred. Yeah. We have, ooh. Who okay. did Nynaeve beat? Mogedian. Mogedian. Good one. That's it. That's all I got. You're not going to be able to guess them because we've only heard them offhandedly. In the glossary definition. And once in story. So one of them is one of the ones that is used as a bedtime story to scare children. Not going to know it. Can you just tell me them? Semarag. Semarag. Yeah. Uh, Semarag. 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 Yeah, Semarag. Okay. And Masana. Does anybody study... Semarag studiously? Maybe. I can't remember. Okay. Something to think about. All right. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's good. That's funny. I didn't know that word before. Yeah. So they can use Rand and present him to the Dark Lord and like gain a bunch of favor. This is part of Lanfear's plan. Yeah. Right? And it'll be good if the other Forsaken are just like gone when that happens. Because like, why do we want to share all the glory? Well, and also what's Lanfear's real plan? Like, when we talk about this... Oh, she wants all the Forsaken gone. She wants her and Rand to battle the Dark One. And then rule the and world, rule the as, world like, to, as, like, power couple. The new Dark One. I'm or here something. for it. That's yeah. my favorite. <laughs> I really hope that's how it ends. It's like a plan within a plan within because, another like, plan. she's not even really Dark Side. She's Lanfear Side. Yeah. So, I'm it's here like, for that plan. It's like Lanfear's plan is terrible because she's trying to rule the world oh, with her boyfriend, like who's not it. her boyfriend. I like it a lot. I think it's great. <laughs> it's not even about her boyfriend. It's about how much power he has. That's the only reason she likes him is because of how much power he has. She's power freaking hungry. She wants to rule the fucking world, and whoever has the most power, that's who she's going for. Yeah, okay. Power couple. I dig it. That's what she goes for. That's what she wants. She's powerful. You're powerful. Let's be powerful together. Yeah. Oh, we also get in the exchange of insults that Lanfear was the one who kind of got like pulled around by LTT. So. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> so much shade. Yes. So Lanfear suspects someone else of trying to control Rand and kill him. Probably Morgedian who likes control or maybe Demandred. That's why I remembered that name because yep. we just heard it here. We just heard it. And he hates LTT so much. We know it's not Morgedian though because she wasn't trying to control him like she didn't know that the black Asia were going for that color thing i think okay maybe okay maybe i'm just saying things it's yeah been you're a just long saying time things. Now. that's okay 
But I, when I was reading this, I remember thinking it's not Mulgedian trying to control Rand. Okay. Because okay. she was surprised. Anyway, it, like about the whole like collar bracelet thing. Okay. I think. You're going to have to come back to that one. Ah, okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So Lanfear has been keeping a close watch on Rand and tells the rest that they need to stay away from Rand. And I love this. Like if she was playing Big Brother, she would have the strongest social game. It'd be great. Oh, yeah, they fantastic. all are like, you're right, Lanfear. We should all stay away from Rand. You keep tabs on him and report back to us on what he says. Yeah. And she's like, I got this. Guys. She's like, I got this. Teamwork. I got this. She's got the strongest social game because she's like, you guys stay away from him because you need to get out of here. So we do get some important information about the characteristics of these Forsaken because we got to start like thinking big picture for the individuals. Yeah, we know a lot about Lanfear and her plan, but we got to start understanding what these other Forsaken are doing. So Ravine prefers diplomacy and manipulation, which makes sense because he's doing the whole more gays and andor thing Mm -hmm. and then we've got samuel who likes armies and conquest which is the alien thing alien thing now listen though grandal i don't know where she is we don't know where she is she likes conquest but not through soldiers so she's not the one who's going to be like ravine and samuel who's going to take over a kingdom and conquer by conquest and armies and all that big stuff okay my initial thought is saldea because that's the only other nation that we've like sort of heard is doing something sure right now but we also know she likes to take like people who are higher status yeah and she likes to like manipulate in that side of things yeah and she likes to take over territory in that way got to consult the map ah it's tough i don't know because Bilal was tier yeah right and so it's like if they're all taking over some places like the only other place that we've sort of heard of is like Mirandi. Like there's some stuff happening in there around like Lugar. Like there was stuff happening in Mirandi, but we haven't heard anything going on in there other than they like passed through really fast. Okay. And there were people, there were, that's where those like weird attacks sort of happened on Rand. Well, let me ask you this because we do know that there's a lot of. Shinar? Well. No, that's army. We know that Shachin has some dark friends too. Sean Chen. Is anybody going to be like infiltrating the Sean Chen army to be, you know, doing stuff like that? I mean, we've no. we've even got Ch- we got China over there. China. China on the other side of the island. We 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 got we got, you know, lots of territory here. No. We got the sea folk? No, I'm buckling down on Mirandi. Mirandi, okay. Or not Mayen? the sea folk. Man, yeah. Are there like high up people there? Sea folk? Well, Barrelane is man. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. I don't know. I actually don't have a prediction here. I have to think about it more. Yeah, I threw a lot of information at you there, so. But we got the... It's not Sean Chen. That's like 100% I know. Okay. You 100% know that. I like that. You're usually like 72 or 98 or (laughs) or like 100%. I do. I know. I know. I just want (laughs) to... I want to get back to this and wrap it up. Okay. So we get that Samuel is like, I agree. I will not go near Rand until I'm sure that I can win against him. Phew. Don't want to get another face And so they continue to discuss their plans and that's where we cut off. And I have to say, good prologue, good prologue. It's a pretty good warm up. It's like, give me some of that Forsaken. There's so much information there. I can't believe we talked for so long about this. It's good, yeah. A lot of good stuff. And we're kind of, you know, moving into a lot of different plot lines now. That's the big thing about moving forward is that everyone is doing their own thing. Yeah, I love it. I love this. It makes it the reading so much more complex. Yeah. And fun. Yeah. Like this is the kind of stuff I love. I love when it's not super straightforward, super easy to understand. Like I like when... I have an idea of what's happening, but I still don't have an idea of what's going to happen. It's like, what's next? <laughs> this is what this is what gets you in a book series, right? This is where I'm hooked. I have to tell you, I know people say that like The Shadow Rising was their favorite book, and I get why. Yeah, yeah. But I have to say that the opening of this, this is where I'm 100% like hooked into this series now. Strong start. I this like it. This is it. This like is it. where I have a hold. Even if, like, if we weren't doing this, this is where I personally would be like, oh shit, let's go. This world is expanding. These characters are expanding. And I'm just here for it. I love it. Yeah. No, I'm it's excited. A good start. I'm here for it. I can't wait. 
Let's go. And so before you have a forsaken surprise party without me, <laughs> I'm going to say that this is part of the pattern now. Yeah, it's part of the pattern. That's all for now, but until next time, thank you so much for listening to this episode. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, edited by Danny, produced by Danny and Brett with Passion Socks, Mozyme, Moltude, Benjamin, Michelle O'Brien, Jamie Young, Cody Feltz, Giannis, and Megan Smiley, with music by Audionautics.com. If you're interested in supporting us and helping us to make really great content, you can head over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the wheel weaves podcast. And you'll also get access to some really great bonus content like early access to our regular episodes, bonus episodes, unedited video episodes, access to our live recordings, monthly Q and A's and more like stickers and keychains. Don't forget to find us on social media. We're on Instagram and Twitter at The Wheel Weaves Podcast. We'd also love for you to join the conversation over at our Discord, and you can find the link to that in our bios on those social medias. We'd love for you to tell a friend about us. Referrals really are the best compliment. We'd love for you to leave a review and subscribe. That really does make a huge difference. Thanks so much again for listening. This really is part of the pattern now.